Good morning, students. Welcome to our online sessions. So we were studying about the crop production and the <coughs> management, under which we were dealing about the agricultural practices. So now, uh, in the last session, we had studied about the irrigation and protecting the plants from the weeds. So now, in the next session, we shall study about the harvesting and the storage. So after the growing of the cereal or the crop, the time it will be for the cutting of the crops, and this is known as the harvesting. So that is the after a season of three or four months duration, the crop will be ready for the cutting, and this is this process is known as the harvesting. So harvesting either it will be done manually by using a small tool called as the sickle, or the machines also can be used. So after the cutting of the crop, the crop has to get a separated from the shaft. Shaft means the nothing but the waste material that is the leaves will be there and the whole fruiting body will be there. So that is the unwanted not waste and that is called as the shaft. So after the harvesting, the seeds has to get a separated from the shaft. And this separation either it will be done by using the thresher machines known as the threshers. So that is a they will thresh so that the seeds should not get it damaged. Only the seeds should get separated from the shaft. So after threshing, the next step will be the winnowing. So you might have seen in the agricultural fields and all the winnowing will be done. That is, they will take all the the husk as well as the seed. Now the separation of the seed from the husk is known as the winnowing. And this winnowing it will be done by by pouring that whole seeds and the grain and the husk in the opposite direction of the green current. So then the husk which is very light weight it will get a carried away with the wind and the heavy grains it will fall down and then they will collect the grains and then they will uh, beautify and it will be dispatched for the commercial purpose. Otherwise, so this will be done in the very small hold farmers. But in case of small, large scale, even the pressure combined machines will be used. So in the combined machine, both the threshing as well as harvesting, there is a harvesting and threshing will be done and then winnowing machines will be available. So in the combined machine, it will do both the harvesting as well as the threshing, there is separation of the seeds from the shaft and then it will be subjected for winnowing machines. So this winnowing machine, it will be adjusted with the fans so that the directly uh, generation of the wind current so that the husk will be separated in one side and the seeds it will fall on one side. So this is how the harvesting will be done. So usually in our country that is India, the harvesting that is the season it ranges from three to four months. So after the great toil and the strength facing the challenges in the open field, in the piercing cold and in the scorching hot and there is a the sun. The farmers, they will feel very happy, their heart will get very filled with the happiness by seeing the, the whole crop is uh, starting with the golden crop laden with the seed. So after a very great uh, sweat and toil of three to four months, it will be the time for them to rejoice themselves. They want to enjoy themselves. They want to celebrate the festival. So the one the special occasion it will be celebrated in India with the different names in different states uh, indicating the harvest festival. So this is the harvest festival in India. It will be celebrated as a Pongal, Bihu, then a Holi, then a Diwali. So like this, in different states it will be uh, celebrated under different names and this uh, festival it is nothing but the harvest festival. So the whole family, they will have a very festive mood, uh, very new clothes and also having a very festive food and all and uh, remarking that uh, their, actually their sweat and toil has brought about a very good fruit in their lives. So this is about the harvesting. So after harvesting, the next challenge for the farmer is for the storage because immediately after the harvesting, the whole crop it will be not consumed by the people. So once the harvest is done, it will be done in very large scale and it has to get the store for until next season because for one harvest we have to wait for minimum three to four months. Again one month it will be for the renewing the fertility of the soil. They have to again prepare the soil for next season. Again until next season there should be enough food in order to fulfill the demanding population.
portion that is the food demand. So after the harvesting, the next challenge is for the storage. So in small scale, the storage will be done either in the metallic beams or in the gunny bag. But in case of a large scale, it will be stored in the a very big, big storage container. They are known as the silos. So this, this is done in very large scale in order to store tons together of the crop. So before storage, one important step the farmer has to follow that is the drying of the seeds. That is the freshly harvested seed. It contains maximum amount of moisture. So if the moisture content it is more, then it will be having more susceptibility of getting attacked by the organism. So if the if the so much moisture content it is there in the seed, definitely such seeds will get spoiled, and the spoiled seed it will become unfit both for consumption as well as for germination. That is, that seeds cannot be used for the growing again for the next season crop. And we have to uh, protect the seeds or the crop, the so harvested crop from the microorganisms, from the insects as well as uh, from the fungus. Because if the moisture content is there when they are kept in the damp places or in the humid conditions and all, then uh, definitely it will get uh, attacked by the fungus and such an uh, attack uh, that is a spoiled food, it will be not fit for our health at all. That's why the seeds first before going for storage, it should be dried enough in order to remove the almost all the content of the moisture and then only they will go for the storage purpose. So in our homes also in a small scale, we are not storing the tons together hardly 1 kilo or the rice seeds 125 kilo and dal and all it will be only 1 half a kilo or 1 kilo and we will use only for up to 1 month. That is how much crop we want, how much uh, the groceries we want for 1 month we will store. Even within one month also, sometimes our groceries will undergo spoilage. So in order to protect our groceries from getting spoiled, we will keep neem leaves in the better containers because neem leaves it has got antibacterial in nature or antiseptic in nature. But in case of large scale, that will be stored in the silos or in the godowns. Even I have seen in the godowns, very big, big godowns will be there. They will stock up all the crops in the gummy bag. It will be sealed and with the day and all it will get sealed and it will be kept in the grocery. So whenever there will be a demand from the population, that is from any state or any district or any locality, they will release that uh, crop and so then that crop will be used until the next season so that there should be no shortage of the any sort of the crop. So in case of a large scale, when they are keeping these uh, crop in the silos or the granary, they cannot go for keeping the neat list. So they will keep, keep the chemicals. So some chemical treatments will be done. So that these chemicals, it will uh, get evaporated from in the fumes. And that fumes it will become very much offending for the attacking insects or the pests. Even uh, the rodents, that is the rat, rabbits, mice and all, they are the very dangerous creatures for the crops that will be kept under the storage. And also apart from this one, some of the crop will be kept under cold storage that is they require very cold temperature. Because such a uh, crops if it is kept under room temperature, very rapidly it will undergo spoilage. So in order to avoid this one, it will be kept under cold storage and whenever there will be demand where a very good pricing will be done, the farmers they will release that the crop. So this is about the agricultural practices. For students, we have understood right from the preparation of the soil up to the storage, what are the challenges are there and what are the important steps to be followed and what in each step which are the tools <coughs> and then advantages and what are the precautions the farmer has to follow. Hope we have understood. So apart from the plants, even the animals are also they are the source of the food for human beings. One of the good example is the milk and the powdery meat. So meat also we are getting from the animal origin. Then the meat, then the third is the powdery, then fish 
and the eggs. So this is the major important food what we are getting from the animal source. So why we are taking because they are either rich in the vitamins and the proteins. So usually the people who are living near the coastal area they are very much uh, adjusted for the fish. Their staple food will be the fish and fish as you all know it is very rich in the vitamin A. Vitamin A which is also known as retinol. So retinol, retinol, why it has got the name retinol? Because it helps to safeguard the health of the retina. That is a very important part of our eye that helps to visualize the things. That is it will help in the vision formation. That's why it is called retinol. You might have seen doctors will advise you consume more fish because it is very good for our eyes. So meat, it is a nutritive fact. And then it contains a, a very good quantity of calcium that is very good for our bones and teeth. So like that different uh, animal source food also it is very important and we are using in the form of the source of food. So uh, dear students up to here uh, this chapter that is crop production and management uh, we have successfully completed. Hope all you have enjoyed and understood this lesson. So in the next session.